Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, lovely to see you all. Today I thought I'd show you how I do layering up um, and taking away paint with watercolour. The you know the medium that everybody fears really. Um, it's such a complicated medium. Um, but this I'm just doing like a make believe flower of my own. This isn't a real flower. Uh, just so I can show you this technique. Now. At the moment, this is in fast time, um, but I will slow it right down and show you soon. It's it's very different to using acrylics because when you're using acrylics, you you know, uh, and you're glazing, um, you're sort of thinning out your paint um, before you put it down. But with watercolour, you're putting your paint on quite thick and picking your colours that you want. And then what you can see I've got in my left hand here is a baby wipe and i've got a jar of uh two jars of water one that's completely clean and another one to clean my brush with the clean the completely clean one i am now placing on water with it and then wiping it off on my rag until i'm wiping back the paint so um as you can see on the ends excuse me on the ends here i'm putting like little tips on the ends so here look so i'm going to next thing i'm going to paint one in here it would you would have seen this a lot better if i'd have done this with the darker color underneath actually and um, but I do, it doesn't really matter i was just wanting to, to try and do it to show you so that's, i've put that on quite dark and then I'm going to wipe my brush on my baby wipe. And then I, when I go back in, it takes the paint off. This technique is fantastic for all watercolour painting because it's, it's just endless. You imagine you, it's perfect for gaining light from just one area, you know. And uh, obviously, the more that you wipe your brush or brush, or the more that uh, you wet your brush, and clean it, and then put it back, and and things, uh, the more that the, it comes off. You might ask, well, why don't you only paint half of it anyway? Well, here's the reason why: to remove the paint after it's it gives it a beautiful effect it doesn't give you that cauliflower look uh, um although i do love that cauliflower look and i don't claim to be an expert at watercolors but the cauliflower look is good when you're using abstract and things but if you were here i wanted to get like a glazing effect so i can see that the the colors that's underneath that come you know make those come through and so therefore I'm, I'm excuse me i'm just altering this petal because it wasn't how i wanted it um it doesn't really matter it's not a real flower i'm just trying to show you the technique really um but um you want to be able to see the lines of the other flowers going through the through underneath and that's what gives it depth so if i was doing a real flower like a rose i've i've done a few more on here so please watch the video till the end because i'll show you how i framed up and looked for compositions in some of these other tiny little paintings like this that i've been doing in in different colors and things and you'll you'll perhaps have a better idea but um i want to be able to see it through uh you know the lines through once that i've gone over it and um, it's not easy to do uh, it looks easy but it isn't easy um, so here look i'm wetting my brush i put on a thick thickish layer dark a layer but you can see straight away look as that pulls off but because i've gone close up to the line but i haven't gone into the line it leaves the outside edges of the lines there and then in the center you can remove it so you've just got a nice little bit of a shade and um, it gives it a beautiful effect. It's a proper see-through, you know, transparent look. And um, so here now, uh, something I must um, tell you because I haven't shown you this on the video. What you need to do between every layer when you've finished it is to dry it with the hairdryer or leave it to dry. Um, if you do use your hairdryer, stand well back with it because you don't want to cause any spider effects going out to the side unless you completely doing it abstractly um but yes um where you've just seen me do those one two three four five darker leaves 
before I started these two darker leaves that's on top of that, I then dried it with a hairdryer and same with the other layers. Don't move on or with anything, otherwise it will just all bleed into each other and it will just make a mess. I actually struggled the darker that I put the um, paint on. So a little tip there is to um, to keep it nice and cool, uh, nice, you know, nice and soft and gentle really do it you know don't try and go in too heavy too quick and um if you look at my left hand that's holding this baby white look how relaxed my hand is it's unbelievable this is so relaxing to do it's a slow process but it's well worth it i think in the end i'll i'll show you some of the other pictures um soon um as i'm going in um the reason why I've done it a lot of this painting in real time is because people have said to me, oh, you, you're skipping through things too quick and it may look good. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I am trying to show you something and for you to take away and learn a little bit. Not that I claim to be an expert and I'm certainly not an expert with watercolours, but I, I do like to dabble. And um, yes, and so it would be nice to be able to, as you know, uh, to combine the two with abstract for me and with neuro art as well. Um, but this, I'm going to be using this technique such a lot now because it's beautiful. It feels nice. Um, now, I bought um, a new um, pad of uh, watercolour paper. Wasn't over thrilled with it, uh, so I won't say what... Um, um, what brand it was um because i don't want to you know i don't want to um you know it, it's always a personal preference with people so there's no point in me saying you know it's not nice you know i didn't like it i think the thing that i don't like about it is that the grain the paper is good the 300 gram paper nice and thick absorbs the water takes a beating you know um, you could abstract around this before or after and um, it would look uh, amazing and the paper would take a proper good beating and, you know, absorbs a lot of paint and a lot of water. Excellent. But the thing I didn't like about this particular um, one was that the grain was too, is too thick for me. It's too, too, too grainy. I like it to be a bit smoother. Um, now, the last ones that I did, that I'll show you again at the end, they were uh, done on mixed media paper. And although um, I felt that that, it always seems strange to me, you know, mixed media paper. I think if you're doing watercolour, you're wanting to do it on watercolour paper. But on mixed media paper, I found that it was a little bit better just for the simple fact that... Um, the, the grain was smoother but you see the paper is thinner so it probably wouldn't take a, as as much of a beating as what this is doing you know I, I put in again now look you see I will dry that middle before I've moved on but I didn't show you that the simple reason why I haven't shown it you is that I have to take um when I'm filming it's very difficult because I have to take um my camera away from the hairdryer and it's not easy to get it over and sometimes if you're doing that in real time it can make people jump that was another comment that i got it's made them made them jump and they didn't know what it was so um i've cut out that here i'm using it's this is just a little uh, fine liner pen a permanent fine liner you've seen me use them before for my neuro art so it's not going to bleed or run into my watercolours. I'm just, I've just edged, uh, you know, edged a few little areas and pointed the miggle out to myself a little bit. Don't forget, this isn't a real flower. I, you know, this is my make-believe flower. You know, I live in fantasy world. I, I can do what I want. I can paint what I want, when I want and how I want. And so um, this is how I felt today. Um, some of the other pictures I've done a few and you know and I will be aiming soon to be able to do a lot more realistic painting like this because I think it's a fantastic technique I've even used it to take away on the leaves if you look the leaves of this little, little tiny flower um, taken away the paint at the top and then left like a middle tone and then 
in the bottom um, made it darker. Here now, I'm wetting the edges of where I want to paint first because now I do want it to bleed a little bit. I wanted the leaf to bleed so it came, at the petal rather, so that it came across it a little bit and bled down into it just to give it a little bit more depth really. Now some people might say, oh, why why have you done that before? Why didn't you do that before? Because it's simple, because until you start to work on your painting, you don't know exactly, well, I don't know exactly what I'm actually painting and which way that it's going. So if I decided that, you know, I wanted to make it look at a little bit more, um, dramatic i should say i would have i would have done these first but i wanted i wanted to keep it nice and light and everything and uh for a change which is different for me a little bit more of a subtle look and a little bit more fragile and and things like that you know if you imagine doing some beautiful like um um little butterfly wings or fly wings or buzzy bee wings in this technique it's perfect because you can then go in with like a little crayon and um do the little veins and um i did some pansies and i made little veins in them i'll show you soon you'll see them soon um just try and watch to the end. I know it it may be a little bit um, boring um, in parts, but um, it's worth it because I've tried to slow things down for you so that you enjoy it. And um, yeah, I mean, you can always fast forward, can't you? Um, but yeah, so now still bleeding it down just to give it a little bit more depth. And then if I wanted, I could add more water to that towards the centre to take paint away again. So, um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I'm, for once, I'm not getting paint everywhere and my hubby getting on at me. <laughs> um, oh, no, you've got paint on your clothes again. Oh, you've got paint on your new glasses. And oh, dear. <laughs> so, um, but no, um, at least um, I was enjoying it and I was enjoying taking my time. And um, yeah, and as you can see now, the, the flower is starting to pop a little bit. Um, the centre is starting to pop a little bit, just a bit simply because it's darker. And uh, so that part's coming forward. And then the red is kind of also a warm colour, so that's going back. So now along the edges, I decided that I wanted to lighten them. And because my baby wipe is fairly clean and still quite juicy, with a little bit of water adding there and then pressing the baby wipe on, it's now making the edges like kind of disappear into the into the background, which is what I wanted. And this is where it would come in really handy for for you to use this technique. Um, yeah, it's fascinating what you can do with it. It's um, if you look at this like uh, when you can when it come to the darker parts, you'll really see how it stands out that you're taking more paint away. You can't think that there possibly can be more to take away and to knock back, but but there is. And it just gives it that beautiful, subtle effect on the edge. The line that I'm working on at the moment, if I was to do this again, it, you know, it's a bit dark, but I was kind of not rushing through the video, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm trying to provide a video for you to to um, to to watch and for you to have, have fun and having a go at yourself. So here now, look, I'm going where the darker area is and you can see starting to take the paint away just with water. But as soon as you add that baby white and you do that, look at that, it's beautiful, a beautiful effect. I couldn't get that effect with acrylics, not in the same way I've tried. Um, but um, it suddenly just gives it more depth. It's almost like that the flower's starting to curl up. I could have made it curl up more, but um, decided not to because it's not a realistic painting or anything. I'm just trying to show you a, a technique and um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying doing it. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying watching it. So here again, look, pushing back with that, with that baby wipe and trying to make those lines there. Can you see how you can see straight through that line where that petal is there, straight through to with the line underneath. So 
now i'm just going to add um, a darker color now to go even darker into the center just a little bit but i wouldn't have done this until oh sorry no i've dried it off it, it now with a hairdryer and now i'm doing some splatters i'm doing this with a very tiny stiff brush and just splattering it away because um it was a stiff brush and and because the brush is tiny it's given tiny effects so moving it around and making it all nice and soft lovely effect you can control it where you want to go and moving it round again but that looks a little bit boring so uh, me being me i want to add differences as per usual so this time i should go in a little bit heavier tapping it this time to get bigger splodges and splatters so in the distance now you could they could be whatever you want them to be you could have made them into birds or but you can see from the flower and um, to the fine splatters to the darkest splatters and the biggest splatters there's a lot of difference and that's what we're looking for still in our art is differences you know like dark against light uh, large against small yeah thin against thick lots of different kinds of differences and then this is a little green that i've mixed up so i'm putting a little bit more of this near the bottom so it probably will you know again you you can do whatever you want you could make more flowers i could have put more flowers if i was making a real picture was it i wasn't this is just an exercise and i'm just finishing off with a few splatters just to show you some heavier splatters now at the bottom and flicking the brush forward so that it gave the line of splatters rather than just the splatters going from the top completely dried it now with a hair dryer and then i'm going back in now with a white gel pen it's one i use for highlighting when i do dog portraits actually very cheap to buy um but good quality i think i got the two of these for like 2.99 i think from the range and then just adding those in and um making it a little bit like a fuchsia at that at that point you can see it there so you can see how you can see the lines through it and then if it was popped in a frame this isn't a real frame this is a framing app so um i just did that just to make it look nice really so if you continue to watch now, so I'm going to try now different compositions with this. Obviously, this isn't a fantastic picture, but um, some of the other pictures are quite nice. Um, so just hang on a little second. So I'm trying different size borders, um, you know, uh, mount mats. I've got a few that have had some splatters that I've caught splatters on them. I quite like this, this fat square one. I think that they make lovely um lovely pictures uh when they're mounted up especially when they've got a backboard on them and slipped into sleeve clear sleeves and then you can seal them and put your label on the back and things so here's now some more that i've done these are on mixed media paper these are pansies this is what i'm saying about the effect that you can get if i i'm sorry i didn't zoom in on this part but they got uh, like veins in and they were just put in with crayon afterwards after they, they were dry so and then this was just another effect and moving moving it around to gain nice composition that's in the nice composition there that's a tension composition where it's heavy at the top and lighter at the bottom as if somebody is like saying no no don't drop the piano on me so um yeah and that's a nice composition a lot going on on one side and just a little bit on the other this was like a, a rose and um, like a, a, well, they're just make-believe flowers. I've just been playing about with the paint. And you could either have it in the centre there like that, or you could have a bit of a corner, a tiny bit showing. I quite like that. Yeah. And then moving on. I liked this flower. I liked how I did the splatters going through the flower at, at the end. And that gave it a lot of depth as well very um pretty in that frame would make a, a nice little uh, present for somebody um what i and this was just a few that i did on one page um i think filling up a page and in in all these gaps i think that would be very very nice uh, to do which i might have a go at doing uh, and that you could have a go at doing too again moving around and finding different kinds of compositions I like that one there 
very nice and then try and with a little bit bigger frame just a little bit bigger just there and then an even smaller frame but in a different effect you can try it crossways to like it make it more landscapey that looks pretty there moving on moving on bringing these back through again now but in different frames so it gives them a different composition you can do whatever you want to then can't you i have to say that the pansy ones that i've done are my favorite because i i like i said to you earlier on i feel that the pansy ones the way that i uh, did those and made them with those colors so transparent and then putting the veins in these were a bit more vivid and you know stronger colours, but um, if you was doing them like the pansy ones, they would make beautiful butterfly wings, like I said, or dragonfly wings, or fairy wings, or it's never ending, you know, flies, or you know, beautiful. These ones here look, and there's the veins look, love it, and I left some of the cauliflower in as well because I liked it. I'm not, you know, I don't claim to be a watercolorist at the end of the day. I'm a mixed media artist. So, you know, I enjoy experimenting and I hope that you uh, enjoy looking at uh, what I come up with and um, have a go at some of the techniques. Even if you go away with just one little tip from this video, oh, that will be great. That's a lovely composition there. I do like that one. And then back to the one that we did on the video. Just trying it with bigger ones and cutting off corners, look. Or you could have half of the flower, top of the flower. You could have it landscape. And you could put always put something else on the opposite side. I've just sort of um, done it so that um, I can show you, really. That looks nice there. Cutting half of that flower out off and just having it on one side. You could always do some splatters at the top right hand side just like i have done here but bringing it down a little bit just to show okay then bye